Here's a question from Trey Hod, who's a who's a, a regular in my streams. Also, uh, isn't shy about donating. Thank you uh, very much, by by the way, Trey Hod. I, I really do appreciate your donations on my stream. Everybody's donations, not just yours. Fuck you, Trey Hod. You're not special. I'm just kidding. You very are. You're really special. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know what I'm doing, Katie. Don't be making faces. Your your production. That's it. You're not editorial. Get out of here. The question from Jehad. No, 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 no. Put the headphones back on. I'm just kidding. Um, the question from Jehad. Do you plan on doing both YouTube and Twitch for long, or do you think you'll switch over to one in the future? And. I saw this question asked not of me, but of Gassy Mexican in one of his streams. I really like watching those guys stream. You know, their Fucked Up Friday series that they do is, is really entertaining. And it's great that PKA records early because sometimes if we get done early enough, um, those guys are still streaming and I get to watch and, they're, you know, they're really entertaining, uh, especially when they've had a few. Um, he was asked about doing YouTube and Twitch and why don't you stream more? He says, well, I'm a part-time Twitch streamer. You know, I do YouTube and Twitch at the, at the same time. Um, and, I, and, and his answering of that question forced me, I had my own little internal thing where I was answering it myself, so I've been thinking about it. That's the reason I told that whole story, was to say I've been thinking about it. Um, I, uh, I don't see a reason to quit to do only one and not the other, uh, unless for whatever reason YouTube would really crack down on that, on... Um, or Twitch otherwise in terms of uploading content to YouTube from Twitch streams if there's a DMCA thing. Um, but I don't believe there's anything like that in either of my contracts. Um, so I don't, I don't see a reason to not do both. I really like doing YouTube in terms of I can do things like this, whereas I can't really do that on Twitch. I can maybe do it once or twice, uh, but I, I certainly couldn't do this if, even if I had somehow had the ability to live stream um, a, a cigar vlog, which actually sounds pretty cool now that I think about it. Uh, I couldn't do that all the time, but I can do it on YouTube. So YouTube has upsides and downsides. Twitch also has upsides and downsides. And if I do both, I can um, I, I, I get the upsides of both, and of course the downsides of both. But the upsides of both, I'm you know glass half full, plane to win. So I don't see any reason to uh, to quit doing either of them. The my worry is YouTube. As far as uh, as far as all this. Uh, you know, managed partnership and um, and and um, copyright, third-party copyright claims and content ID. That's a big worry for me. And uh, you know, it's YouTube's been since it was announced at the end of 2013. YouTube's been pretty quiet on the whole. You're a managed versus a, uh, a an associated channel, or I forget the other word. Managed and shit. Whatever. Um, it, YouTube's been pretty quiet on that and the whole content ID sweeps. And that's kind of the worst part is that I would like to know, like, when's content ID going to be a thing? When is everybody's videos, if you're not a managed channel, when is everybody's videos going to have to pass through the content ID filter? When is that program actually going to start? Because now we're into April and it hasn't happened. There have been content ID sweeps, but the, the, the whole system of if you're not a managed channel, all of your stuff has to go through this, this, um, this membrane and make sure you're, you're, not, you're not ripping people's stuff off. It just, it was announced, it was supposed to start in 2014, and we're into April and it hasn't. And I don't know. I have no idea. It, it, that's the sort of thing where I need to know how pervasive it is because I need to know if it's going to, because that sort of thing could be ruinous to my channel. And I could have to change formats completely, and here comes a helicopter that's gonna fuck up the sound. Let's just watch it. God, humanity's cool. That's so cool. It's a flying fucking metal thing that's got a bunch of shit going this way and it flies because of it. Like, what the... Anyway, um, that sort of thing could be ruinous to, to my channel and it, it's just like, oh shit, man. Wh where's that at? Is it going to happen? Is it not? Because, uh, because I need to know. 
if uh, if it's going to happen, if it's and and how prevalent it's going to be, because I need to know how to arrange my YouTube channel or if what I do is even going to be viable in that system. So that's the only reason that I would um, either abandon YouTube or become completely hand, completely hands off on YouTube and just upload it. If it publishes, fine. If it doesn't, okay. I'm going to put most of my eggs into the Twitch basket and then I don't know what else there is outside of this. That would definitely force that kind of, uh, that kind of planning. So Twitch and YouTube, I think, you know, why, why do I have to choose? I don't think it would be wise to choose one or the other or to force myself into saying you can have one, but not both. And I think that that would be an unwise uh, choice to, to force upon myself. Thank you for the question, Trihana, and as always, thank you for the donations. I really do appreciate it. Okay, here's a question from Ian Martin Elmo on Twitter. He asks, how often do people jump to unreasonable conclusions about you based on minimal exposure, i.e., quote, lefties and alcoholic, end quote. And my answer is probably not, in terms of individuals, probably not any more at an any larger or higher rate than normal people do because we all do that we all extrapolate when we shouldn't because we have to we can't see everything i can't see every instance of rolling a dice or rolling a die or rolling dice damn it uh i can't see every single i can't infinitely roll dice i can't so i have to try to approximate what i think the outcomes will be i can't uh, I can't see every possible outcome or permutation of that roulette wheel over the next five or, or ten rolls uh, or spins. So I have to use my own internal thing and bet accordingly and, and try to figure it out. Or I don't know every human. I don't know every female. So knowing that, I kind of have to think, oh, well, you know what? Even though I don't know every female it's probably not a good idea to go up to any one of them and say, hey, baby, show me your tits. Because they may not like that, even though there may be one or two or even a few who would be okay with it. And so everybody is forced to extrapolate and generalize in, uh, in society. It's just human nature because we can't identify and live in every single instance of, of any possible um, trial or, or something like that. So I'm guessing the people that that think, hmm, you know what, I see Lefty, sometimes when he streams he's drinking, and sometimes uh, on PKA he has, a he has a couple glasses of wine, so the only times I see him he's been drinking, Lefty must be an alcoholic, which I'm not an alcoholic, I don't think. Um, but uh, that's probably not any more uh, uh, prevalent than it is in, in normal society. The difference is... And the reason that it's a big deal for YouTubers to deal with that is that there are a lot of people, or, or m many more people that are making those kinds of observations than probably normal, whatever passes for normal nowadays. So everybody, on tw on, everybody that follows me on Twitter, almost 30,000 people, uh, almost every of the, or every 104,000 subscriber has a chance to make that kind of observation. Whereas for somebody that's got their close circle of friends and extended family and friends of friends, well, what's the, how many people are uh, available to make those kinds of uh, erroneous uh, observations about you or any, or that normal person, normal um, in what they do? So it's not that. And of course, and, and, and as, as a catch-all filler, and there are just jackasses out there. There are just jackasses who don't like me or don't like what I have to say or don't like the chances that I have who will take anything I say, anything I do, anything I think, and turn it into something that they think makes me look bad or look dumb or foolish or whatever. And okay, there are people like that probably in your life too. Um, if you if you live long enough, you're probably going to find a few of them. So it's probably not any more, uh, you know, apparent um, than than you see, or or any of you probably run into. But it's just that there are probably, again, I don't mean to break my own arm, but um, there are probably just a lot more people that that are available to to make those kinds of observations. So, and that's that's the thing I talk about when I say think about it 
when you when you see a YouTuber in a in a game, when you see a YouTuber in a Call of Duty lobby, or in a Battlefield lobby, or in a Trouble in Terrorist Town lobby, or something, or you see them, or you see a movie star on the street, right? Remember that for you, it's an individual experience. For you, knifing Woody when you see him playing Call of Duty, or knifing Wings when you see him playing Call of Duty instead of going to play the objective or whatever. For you, that's an individual experience. You're just trying to express your individual, uh, I don't know, acknowledgement of them. And it's just you. You're like, yeah, I like them. Here you go. Knife, knife. There we go. But keep in mind, for them, it's a collective experience. Because they have experienced so many more people doing that than just your individual experience. So for you, it may be an individual experience. For you saying, oh, left ear, an alcoholic, blah, blah, blah. Are you making erroneous extrapolations, or extrapolations, I didn't mean to make it sound like I said extrapolations, although that should be a word because it sounds kind of cool. Um, for you, that's an individual thing, but keep in mind, there are probably a lot of other people who have made similar uh, boneheaded statements. I don't mean to say you watching this video have probably made a boneheaded statement. No, fuck it, you probably have. I have too. I say a lot of boneheaded shit, but... I, I even have you guys to keep me in line. So there we go. So it's just a, it's a, it's an individual versus collective thing. That's the argument that I try to make. But thank you for that question. It's very good. It gives me a chance to expand on a, on a lot of things I say. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to bring the Q&A session to an end there. We've been recording for a while here. This thing's almost done. Uh, again, be, uh, be smart about tobacco and, and nicotine intake. And, and you just be careful. Be a, if you're a grown-ass man or woman, make your own decisions. Uh, and, and don't be hard on people that, that choose yay or nay. Uh, on, in that regard. Thank you to everybody that asked questions on Twitter, to those people I answered, everybody that uh, that follows me and asks questions. Um, we're probably going to be doing more of these. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Let me know with a like button. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, comment down below. Hit the subscribe button if this is your first time here, and be sure to follow me on Twitter at Lefty643 or twitter.com slash Lefty643. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you enjoyed. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>